Hey guys, Brandonia21 uh, here. Uh, first thing I want to start off with this video is uh, it's October, what is it, October 7th, I think? Um, it's October 7th, and yeah, and I just wanted to say that my video, uh, How to Create Your Own Software Part 1, Getting Started, uh, was a featured video. And I'm just going to have to say that that's great because um, I really wanted to get people to know how to make their own software. And since this is the part two of the video, uh, it's even better since you'll probably be watching this if you watched part one. Okay, so let's get started with our part two video. We're just going to open up Visual Basic 2008 Express Edition. Uh, this product is licensed, blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to pause it and then uh, unpause it, you know. Okay, so I'm in my project selection screen. I saved the last project, so I'm just going to open it up. Okay, so today in part two, although it's not loaded up, I'm going to start talking. Um, today in part two, we're actually going to be discussing some basic coding and form settings. Okay, uh, we're going to make a button and a text box function, and we're also going to make the form um, function the way we want it to. So now that the project is almost loaded up, Okay. Just gonna pause it again. Oh, just kidding. Okay. So this is our form. Uh, right now we're actually gonna go over the form settings. So the form settings, as you remember from tutorial one, the form properties are right here. So if we click on the form, we'll get the form properties. Um, so what we're gonna do is actually maximize the form size to about there so we have enough room to work we're gonna move the button down here okay oh, we're also gonna be looking at basic properties of other items too okay so if we click on our form oh we've got several properties now I'm gonna explain the basic ones the name is what you would use in the coding to refer to that form so I'm gonna change the name to main form um, A lot of this is just blah. Um, background color, we could change the background color of the form. So notice if we change it to maroon, the background color is maroon, so we're going to keep it that way. Background image, if we have an image, I don't have one. So um, the cursor, the cursor that uh, what the cursor changes to when it's over the form, we're going to make it cross. Uh, the icon. Uh, which is this little thing, little box. Um, just going to keep it the same way. Form border style, as you can see, we could change it to like sizable tool window, fixed tool window. We're going to make it sizable tool window. If you notice, when we change it to sizable tool window, the minimize and the maximize buttons disappear, and the icon also disappears. Okay, uh, we'll scroll down. Language default. We're going to keep it at default. Minimize box, maximize box, opacity. We're going to change this to 80% to give it sort of a Windows 7 transparent look. Um, show icon in taskbar. That's or show in taskbar. That's if you want to show it down here. Show icon. That's if you want to show the icon on the form. We're going to have those set to true. And the text, megabyte TV. Okay, so after we reviewed the form properties, we know how basic form works. Now what we're going to end up doing is add a text box to our form. So we're going to go to common controls and then text box. Now in the text box, we're going to, in the properties, we're going to find where it says multi-line and we're going to make that true. Multi-line enables us to make more than one line inside the text box and therefore make it bigger vertically. Now we're going to make it the size of the rest of the form. If you notice, the, the text box kind of auto snaps when it gets far enough away from the wall. Then we're going to also change the text to the button to press submit. 
Okay. Now what this, uh, what the program we're going to do right now is, um, it's a program that's going to display a message box with the text that you typed in to the text box. So if we double click on the button, it's the code that's going to happen when we click on the button when we run the program. Okay, as you can see, this is residue code from our last project. Now, the code to display a message box is actually what we just had, message box. Okay, then if we press the parentheses, the parentheses come after every code, um, every command. Uh, the parentheses are the basic parameters. Okay, so it says prompt as object. That's what the message box displays. Now, if we refer back to our form one and click on the text box, go into properties, we'll notice the name is text box one. So when we type in the code, we're going to type text box one dot. If we type a dot after the name, we're going to have sub properties of the item we have just selected. So text box one, the sub properties of text box one, we want the stuff inside of it, which is actually the text. Text box one dot text. And then we press comma to go on to the next parameter. Buttons as Microsoft.VisualBasic.MessageBox.Style equals MessageBox.Style.ApplicationModel. Now these are the buttons in a message box. Or this is actually, yeah, the buttons or the style. Now this is going to be a critical message, so we're going to make critical, which makes it look like something uh, bad happened. Okay, next parameter. Title. So the title of the message box. The title of the message box is actually going to be Ooh, uh, whenever you're referring to just plain text, what you want it to be, you need to put quotations, otherwise it's going to read from a certain code. So we're going to make the title O, oh, okay? Then, comma to get to the next one. Um, there is no other parameter, as you can see. So we're just going to end the code with an end parenthesis, and then we're going to press our debugging arrow. Okay, it went into debugging mode. And here we go. As you notice, the opacity has kicked in. As you can see, the code through the program. Um, uh, there's a huge text box, and this says submit. Now, if you notice, if we go over the form, the cursor does change to the little uh, cross thing we chose it to. And there is no minimize or maximize, and the title is the same. Okay, if we press submit right now, it shows a message box with the title, oh, there's an uh, X there, and there's a little like critical error message thing, like we wanted it to do, but if you notice, there's no text in here. Why? Because in the coding, we told it to type, or for the text of the message box to be the text of text box one. So, now we need to type something in text box one, so I'm going to type I'm going to click on text box 1 and type hello people out there. Once I've done that, I can press submit. And it says hello people out there. I don't know why the text wasn't appearing before, but as you notice, we typed and then we press submit. And then it says hello people out there. Um, it's probably because I'm recording a video, that's why the text box is being, oh, there we go. See, it's being all retarded. But I typed hello people out there, I press submit. The title of the message box is, oh, the critical error message, the X, and the thing we typed, hello people out there. Well, thanks for watching this tutorial number two on how to create your own software for free. Um, I will be posting part three, maybe tomorrow or later today, whenever I get to it. Um, thanks for watching. Remember, you could subscribe to me on my YouTube channel, or you could hook me up with my Twitter. My Twitter is Brandonia21. My YouTube channel is Brandonia Productions. Also, be sure to check out my website at brandonsoft.com. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.